This is the Conso model 229. It's a triple feed post bed machine. This is a standard size bobbin. This is a lock stitch sewing machine. There's no reverse on this machine. 229 with no R, so no reverse. If it's a 229R, there'd be a reverse here. Very simple machine, very useful machine. The stitch length is adjusted with the hand wheel and this button. I've got a video and I go over how to set stitch length with this style of stitch length selection. So you can check it out right up here if you want. To show you how to change your stitch length using a hand wheel and the button in the bed of the machine. I also did a video on the versatility of a post bed machine. You can check that out if you'd like. This is a single needle post bed. And the post on a post bed, they can be different lengths. Some of them are real long. I think this is probably considered a, a standard length. You know, as I'm measuring this, this looks like six and a half inches. The length here is 10 inches. It's got manual lubrication points all over it. This one has them marked in red, just kind of handy. This machine connects the upper and lower shafts by a belt, which looks to be in good condition to me. Probably been replaced at some point, but I don't know. So I'd like to talk a little bit about locking in your stitches if you have a machine that does not have a reverse. First, I would like to say that I think maybe people lock in their stitches more than they need to. It's important to know when you need to and when you don't. And so in a lot of construction of articles, you'll sew one seam and then later you'll put uh, two new pieces together and you'll sew across the end of a seam that you previously made. In which case you would not have needed to lock that in. Especially when you're using a lock stitch sewing machine. I mean lock stitch. It's right in the name there for you. So it's not very critical to lock those in. Not like a chain stitch which tend to unravel pretty easily. One thread more than two thread. Most of our machines are lock stitch like this machine. Most of your home machines. And so my point is reverse is not as critical as you might believe. So one you probably don't need to lock all your stitches in but when you do need to lock it in I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can lock your stitches in with a machine that does not have reverse and it's real easy. So the first way I'm going to show you is you just put your work in where you're going to start and you just sew a couple of stitches and then you'll lift the needle out of your work. You'll lift the foot and you'll move that, you'll move your work back to where you started. So you sew a couple, then you move your work back, and you start sewing again. And so now you've got two stitches, you backed up, and you sewed right across those two stitches. And then on the other end, it's the same way. You just, you just get to the end, you lift that needle, Lift the foot, just move your, your work so that you're going to stitch across those last two or three stitches again. So here is uh, one seam that's locked on both ends. For me, this is the best method, um, but I'm going to show you one more. And there's probably more than two methods. What method do you use to lock in your stitches? Put it down in the comments. Alright, so I'm going to show you uh, one more way to do it. And this way, you don't have to manually move your work. So if we're going to stitch this way, we're going to start with our work backwards. And we're going to put 
put our foot down to where we can sew towards the end of the work a couple of stitches, two or three stitches, whatever you want. All right, so that's two. Now I'm gonna leave my needle in the work this time and I'm gonna rotate it. And now I'm gonna sew back across those first two stitches I just made and finish my seam. And I get to the end. Needle in the work, turn your work. And now I'm just gonna sew a couple of stitches back. So there's two examples of a way that you can lock your stitches in without reverse. So if you have a machine that does not have reverse, you can see it's really easy to lock in your stitches. So I've got Tex 105 in this machine. I use a lot of that, you know, for the way I sew, uh, you know, I just use that thread over and over, Tex 105. And this machine can handle Tex 105 all day long, no problem. With the standard size bobbin, you know, you will need to uh, change your bobbins every once in a while. You know, you're not, not going to get a lot of 105 on there, but, you know, it's not unmanageable at all. If you're going to sew with uh, Tex 69, you know, you're going to be able to get a little more thread on here. And some people put bigger in the top than the bottom. Uh, I always just load it up the same. I don't know. I'm funny like that. But, you know, it depends on what you want the look. You know, 60, a lot of people think 69 is just strong enough, and, and they're probably right. I do same top and bottom. You know, when I look at a project, I usually like to look at the underneath side or the inside. <laughs> And so I like the inside to look as good as the outside when I can. So with the triple feet, this thing is ideally set up for leather and heavy materials. You know, I wouldn't hesitate to sew shirts or jeans on this. You know, I mean, I, I think you could put smaller thread in there too. You know, I wouldn't necessarily sew delicates with a triple feed machine. It's just overkill. But I mean, it can be done. If it's really delicate, you might find that the... The mechanism of the machine might tend to, you know, rumple your, your fabric or maybe even cause some puckering and whatnot. But I think the machine is ideally set up for Tex 69, Tex 105. I think you could make bigger thread work, just a little bit bigger. And you could make it a little bit smaller than 69. I just think that 69 and 105 is, you know, the sweet spot. You can vary a little bit on that. On this particular machine, it's currently set up to use a foot pedal to raise the foot. So as I depress the foot pedal, you know, it just couldn't be simpler. So this machine, uh, it's set up so really well right now. I'll set this up to a shorter stitch length. Now I won't go the shortest because I know with 105, a machine will sew shorter than 105 can really um, practically, you know, it just it gets to where it just doesn't look right, you know. It gets so small. So according to this, it'll do 24 stitches per inch. I'm going to set it around 16. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, those are getting pretty small and it's, it's hard to see on this leather. Also, I don't have a leather needle in here. I don't uh, always buy those. You can definitely improve the way the stitch looks when you're sewing on leather by getting a leather point. It organizes the stitch a little better. The way that thread is going to fall into the pattern that the leather needle cuts into the leather. And it makes the stitch look a little nicer than what I'm showing you here. Take her back out to a 
longer stitch length again. On this machine, I, I pretty much like it at the max. What? Oh, I ran out of thread. So here you can see uh, some of the different stitch lengths that the machine can do. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already, I'd appreciate it if you became a subscriber to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching.